I'm Becky L. McCoy, and you're listening to Stories of Unfolding Grace, the podcast about good things that happen during really difficult times. I hope that by listening to these stories, you'll feel encouraged and inspired that you can bravely live through hard things too. today with Caroline Harries, and why don't you share a little bit with us about some of the difficult seasons that you've lived through? Yeah, so in some ways, I feel like the past 10 or 12 years have been full of difficulty. Um, Right when I graduated college, I got diagnosed with a disorder that basically made me feel like I was constantly moving, so it's a little Mm -hmm. different from vertigo. Super rare, super hard to get diagnosed, but Really, I feel like that kind of um, started my season of trials. And interesting enough, at that time, I had asked the Lord just for, I just wanted to know him more. And so in a way, I feel like I kind of asked for, okay, Lord, what can I go through that would cause me to know you more? So yeah. um, that started off. And then I just went through a lot of, honestly, just hard breakups with guys, people mm-hmm. I thought I would marry and um, just at the time, of course, that's the worst thing ever, but just a lot of emotional breakups with guys. And then once my husband and I got married, really not even a year into our marriage, kicked off our season of infertility. And then in the past, uh, it's been almost three years, I lost my two and a half year old nephew to brain cancer. Mm. So there's obviously been joy and peace and wonderful things, blessings in those seasons, but it's been marked by a lot of trials over the years. Yeah, for sure. So what, um, so you're diagnosed with, uh, what is it called? The, you said it's like vertigo. Yeah. It's called disembarkment syndrome, Okay, which literally means when you disembark from like a plane or cruise, they say that's what causes it Mm -hmm. is your body doesn't know how to get back into normal alignment, but mine was just kind of more spontaneous. Um, and it's not something I deal with now, so I've been healed from it, but that season was pretty much miserable. Yeah. That sounds really frustrating and annoying. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Especially when you just graduated college and you're like, the world is mine and now it's not. It's not. Yeah. We were just saying before we started recording that somewhere along the way, I started following you on Instagram and I'm not really sure how, (laughs) but I've just like loved watching you and your husband as you're struggling with infertility, but you're really public about it and really raw and honest in a way that I don't feel like we see very often. Mm. And I really appreciate that. And maybe, you know, I'm sure you have this internal fight But the way that you talk about it isn't saying, like, if you get pregnant, all your problems will be fixed. Yes. And that that's not, like, you won't have more meaning or purpose or be fulfilled if you get pregnant because it's this wrestling and looking at life differently than you expected it to be. So good. So true. Because I feel like our season now, it's been almost five years of waiting for a baby. Mm. And I feel like that season is so hard. Obviously anyone yeah. who wants something when you have to wait for it, whether it's a baby or husband, it's hard. Especially but when know, everybody else is having babies and every, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Um, but I also know that I feel like the season of being a mom is going to be so much harder. Like I'm not here to say exactly what you just said that when I have a baby life is great and everything's easy and this mm-hmm. I'll breeze through it because I truly believe like, Lord, you're just setting me up to be a better mom because I'm going to have more patience. And, and I feel like I'm only going to need him more in that season of yeah. sleepless and um, parenting and disciplining. And, mm-hmm. and I, and I think it's so easy for anyone when you want something to make an idol of it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, tried to emphasize the importance of praising God. Now it's not God. You're good. When I get a baby, it's God, you're good. Even when it hurts, um, God, you're good. Even when I don't have what I want. So I think that's so important to do because 
I just, I just feel like these seasons are so important to praise him in the storms. And it's not God, you're only good when I get what I want from you, but it's that you're good even when life is hard. So Mm. how do you feel? So you have, we don't often talk about infertility as being like grief, but it really is like, it's totally the loss of what you expected to happen. And yeah. And it just not being as easy as it seems like for everybody else. And then you lost your nephew really tragically to brain cancer. So how have you reacted emotionally similarly or different in those two situations? Yeah, that's a great question. I think with infertility comes the grieving of, well, one, starting my family is not going to look like how I thought it would. So even just Mm -hmm. grieving your idea of what your life is going to look like, and then it looks nothing like that to two, I deal a lot with girls going through infertility or I minister a lot with them. And a lot of girls who go through fertility treatments, which my husband and I are not currently doing talk even about how they have to grieve that the process of having the baby It isn't just, oh, I had intercourse with my husband. It's I had to have a doctor, you know, do it. So I think just even grief of what it looks like, like, okay, Mm -hmm. the Lord created us to have children this way, but it's going to be a different way. How those seasons are different and similar. You know, the loss of my nephew, he was diagnosed and passed away 15 days later. So it was a little weird. Two weeks. It was overnight. It wasn't, he did chemo for a year. Like it was so aggressive that when he got diagnosed, we didn't even have time to do chemo or radiation or anything. For someone like me who believes in healing, I think it was just processing all those emotions. Like, Lord, you're a healer and you say you heal. So why didn't you heal? Mm -hmm. Um, But even in that trusting, but Lord, I love you. I know you're good. Um, And I think grief for me really, honestly, is just spending time with the Lord of knowing that it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. And what I really had a hard time with after my nephew passed away was my infertility is nothing compared to what my brother and sister-in-law are going to. Like this does not matter. It's not important. I'm grieving something I don't yet have. Mm -hmm. And they're grieving a child that they lost. And someone had to remind me that that my pain does matter. Yeah, totally. That's what I was just going to say. Like, Oh, but it's okay. (laughs) And that was really good for me of like, no, God does see my heart. He does see how it's hard to wait for a baby. And it's Mm -hmm. not the same as losing a child. And it's not supposed to be, you know, just like someone who loses a husband or who grieves the loss of their finances or whatever. So, um, I will say that was hard for me to wrap my mind around of, it's not the same, but that doesn't mean that my feelings aren't important and that they don't matter. Yeah. Cause so. it's still very real. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. What have you struggled with most in these two different kinds of grief? Do you feel like you've handled them well, or have you kind of had to reassess as you go along and, and start to handle them a li- in a little bit di- of a different way? Yeah. I think for the most part, I feel like I've handled them well, and that's only by the grace of Jesus because I've chosen to pursue him in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't feel like it helps to grow angry, and I really don't feel like it helps to ask why, but really just kind of redirect my focus of, Lord, who do you want to be for me in this season Mm -hmm. that you couldn't be if I wasn't going through infertility, if I didn't experience this loss? And really just trusting him in it of, I don't understand, I can't see the big picture, but I feel like we all have a choice. So when we come against hard situations, again, divorce, it doesn't matter what it is that we really can say, Lord, we're going to trust you or we can run the other way. Mm -hmm. And obviously I feel like the only productive option is to trust him. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've chosen to do. So does that mean I don't have hard days where I'm just fed up and I'm tired and I'm tired of waiting? My heart hurts. You know, those days definitely happen, but I would say not percent of the time my husband and I have been able to enjoy our marriage and have fun and yeah and really all that goes to the Lord of he's blessed us with the joy and the peace and I think that is because we're trusting him Mm -hmm. and we're choosing him and he does he doesn't promise we're not going to go through trials but he does promise he'll be with us in the trials so we've definitely felt his presence in that way 
Yeah, I think I every t- so every time you and your hu- you post a picture of your husband and you together doing something fun, like I really sit back and think about exactly what you just said. Like you're not just s- sitting down and waiting for a baby mm-hmm. and saying our life will start when we have a child, but yeah. you're like living and enjoying each other and making memories and you are still a family. Yeah. Even if you don't have children and that's always such an encouragement to me personally in the things that I'm waiting for. Like there's still so much life to be lived even when I'm waiting. Yes. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly, I mean, I'll speak to the infertility world that so many people are just depressed that they Mm -hmm. think life will never go on. And, and that's easy to do. That's easy to do when there's babies everywhere. Uh, But again, it's like, we're all given the option of how we're going to choose to live our life. And, and I don't want to look back on this season when we are all holding our babies and say, wow, we just wasted five years of our marriage right? because we were bitter and we were angry. Um, so I think we can like inactively, actively wait, of, mm-hmm. you know, pursue God in it, enjoy the time. But also this is a real tangible desire of ours too. Yeah. Um, God, he doesn't delay. And so what does that look like when, when you're in the waiting? I think it's just important to make the most of it. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes when we're listening to people's stories of living bravely, we think, gosh, I could never live that bravely if I had to deal with that kind of a hard thing. But I want to challenge you to rethink what living bravely means. If you're curious how brave you really are, you can take my How Brave Are You quiz. Just head to beckylmccoy.com slash quiz. I know you hear this on every podcast you listen to, but it is so helpful if you would subscribe, rate, and review this podcast too. When you subscribe, it means that you get every single new episode without having to search for it. When you rate and review, it helps other people to find the podcast too. So when you're listening to a podcast and you see suggestions for other new podcasts, those lists of suggestions come from the rating and reviewing. So I would really love it and appreciate it if you would take two minutes, subscribe, rate, and review Stories of Unfolding Grace. If you're dealing with some really difficult things right now, I want to encourage you to hang in there. I wish I could reach through the speakers and give you a gigantic hug, but since I can't, I wrote the three truths and a lie for when life is ridiculously hard. I hope that these reminders and mantras will help you to keep putting one foot in front of the other, and hopefully life will get a little bit easier soon. So on the podcast, we use this definition of grace as being good things that happen during really hard times. So how have you seen grace in both losing your nephew and in struggling with infertility? Yeah, I love that. I love how you define it too. I mean, in so many ways, I think really just, just his presence of carrying us through, I feel like is a huge sign of grace of, Hey, we can find joy. We can feel peace. We can seek freedom in a world that tells you otherwise, in a world Mm -hmm. that tells me that I should be crying every day and, you know, giving up hope. So I think definitely just the tangible ways from the Lord, but also there's been just a million different blessings. I mean, I just think of, you know, the Lord told me to start a blog the week we got diagnosed with infertility. And I just think of all the women that I've been able to connect with all over the world. So I now, I lead a group called Moms in the Making, so it's local where I live, and we've had over 35 babies come out of that group. Wow. So these are all women who came in with a story of infertility, and 35 babies is, I mean, amazing. Yeah. So, and then online, there's over 800 people in the group. Wow. That one's a little harder to track how many babies, but I know it's way 
35. And then the Lord led me to write a book. So I was able to write a book. And I mean, it's just blessing after blessing of just one of my favorite things. And I think kind of what you mentioned earlier, I'm very open about my journey is just the friendships I've made is some of my closest friends are my quote unquote, what I like to call internet friends. Right. Yeah. (laughs) I would have met if I wasn't on this journey. I wouldn't be on this podcast, honestly. Right. Um, if I wasn't on this journey. And then I think just with losing my nephew, I think honestly, just the grace to get out of bed, because when you go through such a tragedy like that, it's just hard to want to do anything and to function. And I've definitely just seen grace over all our whole family. Cause my brother and sister in law are just amazing mm. and have the best attitude despite the tragedy that they've been through. So, wow. What's the name of your book? It's in due time, okay. which is of course the name of my blog as well. Yeah. So the subtitle is hope and encouragement in the waiting. Um, so it's a 60 day devotional okay. and it's really for anyone. Um, you know, a lot of my following is infertility, but it's anyone we're all waiting on something. So yep. again, whether it's spouse, whether you went through a loss of a loved one, whether you're 20 or 80, um, I really wrote it from the perspective that anyone could pick it up and read it. Yeah, for sure. All right. That's cool. I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes so people can find it. Yeah. Can provide a coupon code for your readers. Too, oh, your well, that's exciting. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. How have you chosen to live bravely and authentically? Yeah, I think that's really hard because, um, <laughs> That's not always easy to do, but I feel like it's so important that we do that because that's what builds intimacy. Um, I feel like that's how we share Christ. So I think, honestly, for me, it just looks like being very vulnerable and Mm -hmm. saying, hey, I'm going through infertility, which unfortunately a lot of people see shame all over that. But that I'm not going to associate that with shame. I'm going to share our story so that other people can feel welcomed and other Mm -hmm. people can feel and know that they're not alone. So I think living bravely. And I think to me, it really is just being open and honest with, with what I share with our journey and and everything from, Oh, we're on a fun vacation to, Oh, I'm was laying in bed crying all night last night Mm because it was a hard day. Um, so I think for me, it's just kind of sharing our journey with everyone and not saying, Oh, I'm not going to tell anyone what I'm going through. So, yeah, for sure. What would you say to encourage someone who is going through any of these similar experiences? Just, I would really just encourage people by telling them that God is good at that. I love that in scripture over and over. It talks about going through trials and I talk about this in my devotional, but that when we go through trials, ultimately we become more like Jesus, that we're refined to look more like him that we're strengthened, that we're built up, that, that his ultimate purpose is that his glory would be revealed. And so I feel like anyone who's going through a trial has the opportunity to say, wow, when I come out on the other side, I'm going to look, look more like Jesus mm-hmm. and that his story will be shared, that his glory will be revealed. And so I think it's so important to embrace, embrace the seasons of waiting, embrace the seasons of Um, again, heartache, any kind of trial, whatever it might be that it's not fun. It's not easy, but he truly does give all of the grace. He truly does give all of the strength and the Mm -hmm. peace that you need to get through it. So, well, thank you so much for sharing your heart. I know that, like you said, everybody's waiting for something and I know that they will be encouraged. So before we say goodbye, I have some fun questions so we can get to know you a little bit. So the first one is, what are you loving right now? I am loving that it is February and 80 degrees outside. (laughs) I live in Dallas and I do not like cold weather. So I'm loving that it's been like a warm winter. Yeah. Um, Where do you live? What state do you live in? I'm in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Yep. So, and then, yeah, so I'm just loving being able to run outside. I'm very active. So... That is what I'm loving is spending time with my husband outside. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, up here in Connecticut, we had a couple of really gorgeous days too. And then there's rumor of rain and snow coming back. We're all like, oh, it, it was so close. You... What is your favorite meal or snack or food? Can I say everything? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love food. I eat all day long. I, um, 
love almond butter. That is like, we make it ourselves. We make several batches a week. We just grind it up in the food processor. And then I just love salads. Like I never get sick of them. I crave them. What's your favorite thing to put on a salad? Meat. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, I am kind of a health nut. So I do crave like really healthy things, but fruit, salad, almond butter. Yes to all. (laughs) That's awesome. What are you doing to take care of yourself? Yeah, I think for me, that just looks like eating healthy and um, working out. I work out or exercise every day, and that's everything from going on a walk to swimming or lifting weights and then trying to get sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I could do better at that. Yeah, you know, even with this infertility journey, we've gone through lots of seasons of, like, super strict diets and acupuncture and, like, right. essential and we're kind of in a freedom stage that we've really felt like the Lord's released us to be in, which is nice, but yeah, I, it's so important to take care of our bodies and stuff. So for sure. What are you doing to be brave? Oh goodness. Well, um, hot off the press is I'm about to do host a moms in the making conference. Ooh, that's exciting. So for women going through infertility and Kind of like the book, this is totally out of my comfort zone, yeah. but really feeling, feeling led to do that. So that is what I'm doing to be brave. <laughs> that is so exciting. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully it'll be the fall, this fall of 2017. That's awesome. Well, you'll have to send me the information and I'll yes. share it with people. Absolutely. I would love that. Thank yeah, you. For sure. Well, thank you so much again, Caroline, for sharing your story with us. No, thank you for letting me be on the show. It's an honor. Caroline was really generous and wants everyone to have 15% off at indutimedevotional.com. That's in as in I-N, do time, D-U-E, time, devotional.com. Just head there and you'll get 15% off when you use code UNFOLDINGGRACE15. I'd really love to connect with you. You can find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all the things, at Becky L. McCoy. You can also find me on my blog, BeckyLMcCoy.com, and you can sign up to be on my email list. It's a really fun way to connect, and that way you won't miss a single podcast episode or blog post, and you get special ahead-of-time announcements like new products in the Brave Shirt Shop. Next week on Stories of Unfolding Grace, I'm talking with Kelly Estes about her experience with addiction to prescription pain medication. We had a really great conversation about how to talk about addiction and what it's really like uh, for someone who you may not expect to struggle with addiction to have such a serious addiction. I'm really looking forward to sharing this conversation with you next week.